Good morning, it's cold outside, but I feel like spring this morning, so I put on my green. Because I noticed when we went running to the estate sale that some buds were coming out on the trees. And I always look forward to the seasons here in Indiana. We lived in California, me and number one for four years, and I really missed the seasons. But I can see it starting already, and I saw some flowers little, those jonkles coming up already, they were about five inches high. So spring is on its way. And that cheers me up. So anyway, I wanted to read you this uh, scripture. <laughs> Find it again, Clarine. Okay, so I call myself Clarine. It's Isaiah 9th chapter, 6th verse. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. His name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And that's our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave his life that we might one day be in heaven with him forever and ever and not in hell. You know, one time, I might, might have told you this. I can't remember. I've talked so much. You know me. Talk, talk, talk. But I've always been concerned with people that they received the Lord. And of course, we traveled full time on the evangelistic field for 14 years on love offering and God took care of us. But I was, we, I was at a baptizing. And this man, I went walking down by the river while all that was going on because they have a lot of speaking and stuff. And sometimes I get bored listening to a lot of speaking, though I'm a talker. Anyway, I was walking down there and this man that I know was walking down by the river also. And I said, boy, this is nice down here, isn't it? And uh, he said, well, my wife is getting baptized. And he said, I said, well, aren't you a Christian too? He said, oh, no, no. And he said, I, mm -mm, never. I said, well, okay then. So you've decided to, you've chose to go to hell then, huh? He said, well, no. I said, you didn't? I said, you didn't receive Christ, so evidently you've chose to go to hell. That's your business. That's okay. No, he said, I don't want to go to hell. I said, well, it's up to you. And do you know that man? I said, well, you know how to, to not go there, don't you? He said, well, how? I couldn't believe it. That I mean, he went to church with her all the time. I saw him all the time. I said, well, all you have to do is ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins and come into your heart and be the Lord of your life. He said, let's do that. Well, we did it right there by the riverbank. And his wife's name was Anne, as I've told you before, sometime or other, because it really made an impression on me to be a bigger uh, witness for the Lord, because all of us are witnesses and ministers in our own way. And so when Anne's husband got saved and gave his heart to God, he meant it, and she told me later, he told her what happened and that he wanted Jesus, that he didn't want to go to hell. But I, you know, that's strange. When Jesus offers it free, you know, just come on, live for me. When we went to the West Indies the, for three weeks and we preached over there, me and Buddy, number one, the pastor said to us, you know, once it's a poor country where we went to St. Vincent. And he said, once they receive the Lord and decide to serve Jesus, he said they have more money, they don't drink, they don't play cards, and they live a better life financially because they don't waste their money. And a lot of them, he says, have given their hearts to the Lord. He had a big church load, run like a couple of thousand. And Buddy preached to them and they loved him. He had the anointing of God and without the anointing and the blessings of God, you cannot be a good minister. So the Lord helps me talk to people. It's amazing. If someone asks me to pray for them wherever I'm at, you know what I do? I just say, let's pray. And they give me my, their hand, and I don't care where we're at. We pray. But spring is on its way, and that makes me and Bella happy. And we're looking forward to it. I know y'all are listening to me from all over the world, which is amazing. And I think, 
I'm going to tell them what happened down on that river, and I told you once, but it really impressed me. Now, about my school days. Well, I had wonderful school days, and I had worse school days, because when I was around 12 years old, when my grandmother died, I had a nervous breakdown at 12 years of age, because I cried and cried and cried for Grandma, because we were so close. She had me so spoiled, and she just lived over the hill not far from us. So when she passed away, at she was real young, she had congestive heart failure, and the doctor told her, you may live three more weeks, you may live. But I loved her. And then at my school, when Daddy told him that I had a heart condition, because the doctor said she has a heart condition too, they let me sleep every dinner hour. They put me up a cot, and I laid down and rested. That was fun. But you know, I got well. And then we used to play ante over. Do you know what that is? Come on over, over, ante over, and you throw a ball across the schoolhouse, and then you catch it, and then you run like crazy to catch them all and get them out. And that's what we did, and we loved playing ante over. And I did not enjoy catching the school bus. Now, we had to walk about a half a mile or better just to catch the school bus in all kinds of weather. I did not enjoy that. It was too cold. The west wind would blow in your face and we didn't have adequate clothing, hardly to keep out of it. It was so bad. So those, are not, those were not happy days, but we did it. And then when the weather would break, we would just, we'd just rejoice because we could walk to catch the school bus and there was two little guys, boys that lived just right up from the where the school bus stopped. And uh, his name was Junie Blue and Eugene, two brothers. And they get on that bus and I tell you the truth, their noses ran. And so they'd go like this and like this and their sleeves was slick and dried all up and down here. Well, I got good news for you. Junie grew up, and he got into houses, fixing up houses and selling them. Now that boy is a multimillionaire, and he's a wonderful Christian. His mother was a Christian, but who would have thought that them little old snot-nosed boys would turn out so well? I did not turn out a multimillionaire. My brother Norman is very, very well-to-do. My brother Denny does good. Most of my brothers did real good, but I never was that rich. But you know what? My second husband said a good thing. He would say, we're rich, you know that? I said, how? Because we didn't have that much. He said, we got the Lord, and you're rich if you have Jesus. And that's how number two believed, and I appreciated that about him. So I have just rambled this morning. Kiddos, Grandma don't know what she's going to talk about sometimes, but I'm going to tell y'all about going to Fountain Ferry sometimes. I don't know if y'all ever heard tell of Fountain Ferry, but it was a fun place to go. On and the last day of school, we would go to Fountain Ferry. They'd load up the bus, and we'd go to Louisville. It was an amusement park. It is. They closed it down for years, but I hear they're opening it back up. They had a slide that if you went down it, you'd lose your breath. I went down it one time, I said, no more. No, that like scared me to death. I mean, you just drop into nothing, but you come out smooth. I'm not doing that anymore. Mm-mm, not me. And then they have these big mirrors where you look at yourself, you're fat as a pig or fatter, or you're real thin and skinny, or there's two of you. And us kids enjoyed doing that. And then they had these little race cars you could get in. At bumper cars or something like that. And boy, they were fun. Of course, you had to have a little money, but we always took a little money with us to have fun at Fountain Ferry Park. It was a big thing. And I hear they're opening it back up, and I think now it costs $70 to get in. Well, the school paid for ours, and we went. And I had many fun days. And then later on, I'll tell y'all about going to Spring Mill Park. They did that also during our school year. Spring Mill Park was fascinating, and the teachers would go, and we just had a great time. 
So I'm going to close it down. That's it for today. Lord bless you. And don't forget to walk that walk where Jesus would be pleased with you. Bye-bye.